So, um, I think we've just had two excellent presentations from uh, ABB and Honeywell, and what that's allowed us to do is to really kind of cover some of the bases uh, with respect to connected buildings. And in this session, what we're going to do is to drill down into a little bit more detail and to look at uh, probably the biggest opportunity uh, in the world at the moment for connected buildings, which is small buildings uh, with no energy management systems installed uh, currently. Looking at some of the market dynamics of data, uh, there's three things really come out. Number one is that the IoT continues to grow exponentially. Um, number two is that there is a vast number of small buildings uh, out there, about 26 million buildings uh, in Europe alone. The majority of those will be small buildings, <coughs> small companies, or big companies with lots of, uh, lots of small buildings. And to make the opportunity even more attractive, um, most of these buildings uh, are very poor in terms of their energy management. In fact, nearly half the energy um, is actually used outside of business hours. So um, it's, a, it's a really tremendous opportunity um, to partner um, and innovate and win business. Um, I think in some of the pre previous presentations, we, we, we got a clear message that um, Sophisticated connected systems have been in use in large buildings. I spent my entire career um, working in these types of buildings. In fact, I was scratching my head the other day. I was thinking back, and uh, I used to design electromechanical control systems by hand. And when you uh, made a mistake, you had to scrape off the ink with a razor blade, and then of course all the ink would just go all over the place. And we think that the journey we've been on and where we've come today. Um, so. Connected buildings, big buildings, airports, hospitals, it's more of an evolution. There was always going to be something in there. But today, there are technologies, communications technologies and devices that can be applied to small buildings as well. And they can be applied in an affordable way um, to meet ROI models and other business models. Um, one of the, the main sort of drivers is the advances in wireless technology. Um, so there's two particular protocols, uh, Zigbee, Zigbee, uh, but there are others. Um, and they allow um, intelligent IoT devices to be installed in buildings that don't require to be wired, and they don't require electrical power, they'll run on light, and not even natural light, just light from these lights here, or vibration, or they may have a battery, like a 10-year battery. Um, mesh networking is very good for these devices. The more devices, the stronger the mesh. And another factor is life cycle cost. Most buildings are reconfigured during their life cycle, so walls are moved, uh, a shop gets laid out differently, and with wireless devices, the device can simply be taken off the wall and put on the other wall. Obviously with a wired device, uh, it's going to be much more expensive and messy to, uh, to make those changes. Um, once you deploy an IoT based solution uh, in a small building, it also opens up opportunities for interoperation. So instead of having so single function devices uh, that only do one thing. You can start to get more value out of your uh, assets. So one example would be linking the proximity sensors that are used for the security systems to the air conditioning systems, uh, to the lighting systems. So it's very simple. So some offices are already like this. When you walk out of the room, the lights are going to switch off automatically. The air conditioning is going to widen its um, its band of control, so it'll get a bit warmer if it's a hot day, it'll get a little bit cooler, and then when you walk back in, the band of control uh, tightens up again. Another example is things like window contacts. So the window contacts are there for the intruder system, but they can also be used to switch off the air conditioning if people open the windows. So very, very simple. Um, occupants, uh, workers in the building, um, again, things like cashless vending. So you have an access card, you use it to get in and out of the building, but why not use it to get uh, food and drinks? Uh, you can be used in a small school to take out library books and other applications from the, uh, the same device. Another good thing is to have some sort of fixed display in the building. We usually put them into kitchens, staff rooms, and what this does is it starts to promote energy awareness and awareness of how the building is, uh, is working and what people can do. So when they switch the kettle on, they suddenly realise that it's using a lot of uh, energy or it's costing a lot of money. Maybe the next time they can maybe half fill it instead of fully filling it. And we do get a lot of feedback from customers that a 
awareness uh, alone that can actually uh, save energy and save cost. Now, a little bit technical, but um, there are uh, traditional approaches to, to, to small buildings that are already taking place, which is basically taking a, a device which was designed for a big building and using it with uh, some wireless devices. Now, that device will need to go inside a panel with all the use of uh, colloquial English term, gubbings, uh, along with that. But really to innovate, uh, we need to work together to come up with something which is more streamlined and more cost effective. So, you know, we need to lose the panel, we need to lose the circuit breakers, lose transformers, lose receivers, routers, lose the PDC controller, and then innovate to produce a product that simply screws on the wall and will manage uh, an IoT system in your building to make it safer, to make it more efficient, and to make the people in the building more productive. Now, uh, there are different types of small buildings. Uh, some small buildings, like shops, I have to be dragged into. But this type of small building is my favourite type, and I have to be dragged out of it uh, quite often. So well, let's look at a bar, restaurant, just as an example. So. Typically, uh, bars and restaurants, um, they are not very efficient um, and it's a good opportunity for an owner um, to make more profit. Uh, significant savings can be achieved and uh, some of the measures that need to be taken are very, very simple. Um, you, know, you walk past any bar in the evening and you can see the gaming machine or whatever it is still switched on. Uh, my own local pub um, it infuriates me. There's an overdoor heater and in the summer, it's practically gone all year, uh, burning energy unnecessarily. So, simple measures can be taken. The way that uh, energy is used in uh, one of these types of buildings breaks down into uh, heating, lighting. Uh, quite a lot of energy is used actually in the cellar to keep the, the products cool. So as we discussed, raising awareness itself, using real-time energy display, can reduce consumption by up to 30%. Um, quite often the cellars are overcooled and just by you know, changing it by one degree you can save 10%. We are quite familiar with lighting and that, that's a, uh, a good industry and it's going on in LED uh, lighting refits. Um, and then controlled systems, so actually controlling your heating system properly. A um, number of times I've been in bars and it's a mild day outside, maybe 15 degrees, and you put your hand on the radiator and it's bouncing. It's, uh, it's, it's so hot. Quite often, uh, heating and cooling systems are working simultaneously. So again, these are some simple measures. So one of the most obvious things to do is to switch things off when you don't need them. Uh, night mode reduction. Now, it can be that you could use a, just a display which shows you your energy consumption. You could go around and manually switch everything off. By the end of a night, people are less likely to do that. And in some cases, it's not really their fault because the switch might be away down the floor somewhere or um, that might be too high up to, uh, to switch off. So the idea is to automate that through the use of wireless relays and um, smart plugs, which I think you'll probably um, be familiar with. So that's a nice, simple application. Um, another application is what we call dead band uh, control. So this is what often happens in buildings where the air conditioning system is independently controlled and operating and the heating system is completely independent as well. And so, simply by installing a couple of uh, wireless relays, you can impose a dead man and stop the situation of simultaneous heating and cooling um, and get some good uh, savings and payback from that. We mentioned scheduling and uh, zone control. So quite often these types of buildings, they will have a, like a function room or upstairs restaurant perhaps, which is only used at night. But in most cases, uh, these spaces are fully conditioned. They'll be heated or air conditioned, maybe even uh, the lights will be left on. So some simple uh, zone controls um, adding in will help save uh, more energy. Even things like uh, the production of hot water um, to these areas as well, uh, it can be zoned. So accurate time scheduling too. And then when you add um, remote monitoring and analytics to that, so if you're actually providing also a service where uh, you have specialists that are looking into the data, um, there'll be more opportunities uh, for energy saving. One particular um, bar, uh, we noticed that uh, at night time, um, they're still using quite a lot of electricity, and 
It's the car park lights. Um, they're on a timer, and for most of the year, um, there'll be four, five hours uh, when it's still light outside and the car park lights are on. So just simply fitting a photo cell switches the lights on uh, when they're needed. So a lot of the measures that we're taking are pretty uh, straightforward. They don't require highly skilled engineers to, uh, to implement them. So this is what it would uh, look like. Um, so you would have various uh, technologies uh, installed in the building. You would have your, if you like, the brains um, screwed, on the, uh, screwed on the wall, connected to the uh, devices, um, monitoring your energy consumption, the smart plugs switching devices off uh, when they're not needed. And we mentioned uh, drinks, fridges as well, so it's another classic one. Nearly all bars anywhere in the world um, have these fridges on 24 hours. Now, strictly speaking, um, at 5 a.m., the product does not need to be at the optimal temperature, but it does when you want to serve it to a customer. So again, it's just simply simple things like switching it off, bringing it on at maybe, uh, I don't know, like 6 a.m., um, allowing the product to be at the right temperature when it's served to the customer, but doing it in a more intelligent um, and more efficient way. Um, what's really important is affordability, I've mentioned that before. So, what we've developed is a, a scalable um, approach to this, so customers can invest a small amount of money in just the monitoring and behavioural change if they wish, uh, or they may have 100 buildings, and we could deploy monitoring in the 100, and then deploy controls in the worst performing 10 or 20. So there's a way to, to, to scale this, um, and as we, you can go for it all at once, um, or build it up gradually, um, and maintain the uh, return on investment. Obviously, the more you spend, the more you're going to save. Um, but I think to get in there, um, get something affordable, low cost, especially for uh, a partnership with Eon, it gets us the customer. You know, we win that customer. Um, and then we've got a relationship that we can add value to, and then the customer can see that they're getting a, a return on their investment possibly add further services uh, on top of that. Also the display gives us a, a digital touch point. So we're having a, a digital relationship uh, with that customer and it can be a two-way relationship as well. There's nothing to stop internet feeds coming through, communicating with the customer, gamifying some of the uh, energy saving functions. And it just opens up a whole landscape of possibilities uh, for us to innovate and work together and uh, get a a better understanding of our customers' needs. So, one very important aspect as well is that we don't want to end up with a, an asset uh, which kind of just becomes out of date very quickly. We've seen some great presentations on the rise of technology and the pace of change. So it's important to future-proof as well, to put the communications capability uh, into your product to future-proof. Now, one of the, um, we've actually touched, touched on this in some of the other presentations, um, there's a big growth in wearable technology. And future buildings, um, to make them more healthy and productive, will actually function to provide comfort as it's actually experienced, the human experience of comfort. So your, your actual skin temperature, your blood pressure, and uh, the type of wearable tech that you can, uh, that you can actually wear in a building. And what this will mean in the future is that people will be in the building and the building will start to adapt and function um, to meet the needs of the occupants. A classic example would be this room. Um, if it's completely full, um, the occupants may be getting a bit hot or the air quality might be deteriorating. There could be too much CO2 in the room. So the building could respond by bringing in more fresh air, altering the various dampers and the ventilation system and bringing in more fresh air to make people feel um, more comfortable and hopefully not fall asleep during the presentation. Um, <laughs> I haven't noticed anyone doing that. <laughs> but it has happened to me before. Um, but, uh, um, so that's, that's, that's really the vision um, for, uh, for, for the future. But I think it's very important that we work together, we innovate and we make a start and win those customers uh, to start with. So, in summary, we really think that uh, there is this huge opportunity that what we call uh, nano uh, the very, very smallest uh, type of uh, 
system. Um, that is the, is the way forward for these uh, small buildings. And uh, there's, there is going to be future developments, so we just need to get the right platform where we can continually upgrade the product to get those future developments uh, in there as well. And I really believe that together uh, we have an amazing opportunity to work together and to win uh, more customers for uh, DOE. Thanks very much. Thanks.